Simple phrase, change your story to change your life. If we don't change the story you're telling yourself, you convince yourself to stay in a toxic relationship far too long. Healing from narcissistic abuse, it's kind of like going to an ice cream shop, like Ben and Jerry's, and you have 32 different flavors, except when you walk in, it's like, hey, you've got 1,000 modalities of healing, and you're like, ah, which one do I do? So you try one, and it doesn't work. You try another one, and you get slight healing. You try another one, and, and it's just like this, this like plethora of different options out there. There's so many different people on social media. There's so many different types of therapy, modalities, all these different things, it makes it difficult to be able to hear through sometimes just the fog and all the shit out there. What is actually true and what do I actually believe and how do I move forward in this healing process? Because I feel crazy. I don't know what to do and some things don't seem to help. Therapy is a great option for a lot of people. It really is. I still see a therapist. It's not as much that we're diving always super deep. Sometimes we're working through different things. Sometimes I'm just sharing, hey, this is what I already worked through this past week. And we can see, is there anything that we need to tweak or go deeper on? Therapy had a huge part in my growth, in my development, but it wasn't the only piece. Too often we find people that come to Raw Motivations that are tired and disgruntled and frustrated with therapy because it actually hasn't liberated them from the abuse that they're under or from the mental torture after the narcissistic relationship. I sat down a couple months ago with someone who was sitting across and was just distraught, frustrated and crying because the year before she spent over $10,000 investing in her own personal therapy. And she'd gotten some some good advice. She'd gotten some nice mantras. She'd gotten a couple little things of like, hey, do this, do this. But it hadn't set her free. She was still constantly thinking about him. He's off with a new supply. He's engaging. He's trying to manipulate the kids to him. All these different things. Like she's still distraught. She's still in a lot of trauma. She's still dealing with it. And she's not healing. She's not able to because she wasn't able to focus on anything. Like she came and she sat across the Zoom for me, incredibly broken. And this was after multiple, multiple, multiple therapy sessions. Then there's a piece, not all, but there's a piece of therapy and therapists out there that when they talk about narcissistic abuse and when they try to assist people in narcissistic abuse, they're failing really bad. Because they haven't been through it. They don't know anything about it. They know from, from 13 pages inside the DSM-5 about narcissism and a couple other like uh, cluster B categories. And they don't know shit in how to actually help people. Like just having people talk about their trauma doesn't actually heal them. Is it a piece of it? Yeah. But if you're going to a therapist and all you're doing is sitting down and talking for the majority of the session, just sharing stuff, they're not asking questions. They're not asking you to dive deep. They're not helping you get to the root problem of what's actually going on and heal it. They're just scamming you from your for your money. So when we talk through this piece of how to heal from narcissistic abuse, I want to be able to talk through two aspects of it. I want to be able to talk about the initial image that needs adjustment, and I want to talk about the rewire process that needs to happen. What do I mean by the image? The image inside your mind is what typically will start early on in childhood. This is showcased by your parents. This is showcased by friends, by family, by family structures around you. This is showcased by a lot of different people that starts to construct your image of what a relationship should either be like or what the person should be like. We're not talking about like physical appearance. We're talking about like what you're actually drawn to, like energetically, like how he actually communicates, talks, shows up, is respectful, is not, like all these different things. You start to get drawn to this piece of energy and you start to develop this structure, this image, okay? This isn't like a weird thing. This is just like inside your mind. This is just what you're pull, pulled to. I did a study a while back and they, and they took a hundred people, a hundred people in this mixer and they told them, hey, you're just going to spend time getting to know people, going to mix it up. Like it was just kind of like a, a social mixer, social gathering. They did this experiment and they went through and they took a hundred people, 98 of them were healthy. Like they went through like different stuff to try to make sure like no trauma, like you're good, like all this kind of stuff. And then they took two people that had been in domestic violence relationships and they stuck them into the room of the 98. So there's a hundred people milling in there. Within 20 minutes, those people have found each other. 
like they'd found each other and it happened every single time. Like different experiments had shown the same thing. But those energies, those feelings, those images whoosh, attract. And so it's no wonder that oftentimes you found yourself going back to the narcissist and going back to a toxic relationship. And you're like, what is wrong with me? Because I keep going back to that person. I keep going back to the person that I don't want to be with. Like, I know he hurts me. I know he beats me down. I know he belittles me. I know he hurts my self-esteem, my confidence. I'm a shell of the person. I feel lost. You know all these things. But the problem is you keep finding that same person or that same image in multiple people. And then you look back at different relationships. You're like, I was with a narcissist, and then I was with the worst narcissist, then I was with a covert narcissist, then I was with a with a vulnerable narcissist, then I was with a like you literally just go down the litany of different narcissists that have been in your life. Is because the image hasn't been healed. Maybe that was from your father, maybe that was from your mother, maybe that was from the parents, maybe that was from your first relationship. There's multiple different ways that it could have come about. And so the piece is, if we don't go back and actually heal that image, heal what's actually going on, that initial trauma that started us on this path and trajectory, you're going to continue down the road. Like if growing up you were taught that blue was a bad color, then it's ingrained farther in your life and you always think that blue is a bad color. If you grew up and you and you were taught that red is the best color ever, you're probably going to have more red in your life. You're going to see more red. You're going to acknowledge more red. Silly example, but that's the, that's an easy piece. But I tell you today, hey, today you're going to see a lot of red cars. You might not see any more red cars than normal, but your mind will focus and will see more red cars because I'm bringing it up. I'm saying, hey, you're going to see a lot of red cars today. Like you're going to be driving on the highway and you're going to be surprised how many red cars you see. It's not because there's more red cars. It's because that's what you're focusing on. That's what's in your mind. And so healing from narcissistic abuse has to go back and heal that initial trauma, that initial image, so that you can, don't, aren't any more attracted to the toxic person. Something in that initial image oftentimes feels safe, okay, and, and, and solidified because it's locked in there in your subconscious. And as a result, down the road, you're like, oh, that feels the same, safe. And so you continue to go back to the same person. Now, that was the first thing. The second thing that I was talking about is rewiring, okay? They kind of go hand in hand, but I wanted to bring this up because it's super helpful for people to understand this. Rewiring is changing the story that you believe. Simple phrase, change your story to change your life. If we don't change the story you're telling yourself, you convince yourself to stay in a toxic relationship far too long. So you understand there is a story that you are telling yourself about the relationship. Maybe that it's not so bad. Maybe that, well, at least he doesn't hit me. Uh, maybe it's, well, he's emotionally immature. There's multiple stories. When it gets down to it, you will start to tell yourself stories that are actually about you. Well, I wasn't worthy enough, which is why he left. I wasn't good enough, which is why he went to another woman. If I would have done something different, then maybe he would have stayed. Maybe it was my fault. Maybe it was this. And all these stories start to come into your mind and just attack you. And until we actually change these, until we eliminate them, until we eradicate them, until we move them out of your mind, they will continue to be roadblocks and stumbling blocks for you to be able to continue to fall under and get slowed down in the path of life. And you will not get the direction you want to go or be the person you want to be because they're constantly holding you back. So inside this process of rewiring your mindset, this first understanding that you have stories you think you have lies that you believe right here, right now. We all do. Some of them are intentional lies to keep you safe. Some of them are subconscious lies that your mind and body is telling yourself to make yourself feel better about the abuse that you're going through. You have to have some level of lying to yourself to stay in the abuse. When he hits you and you stay, you have to be able to lie to yourself and say it's okay. You have to be able to find a level of a lie and of a story that you're going to tell yourself that justifies getting abused. And so understanding that we all have lies and then being able to take a look at those and be like, okay, if I look at these lies, if I look at the stories that I'm telling myself and I actually had to put this in a trial format and I had to be able to show up and actually show evidence of how that's actually true, of how I'm not good enough, which is why he left me. And then I realized, wait a second, it doesn't have anything to do with me. It has to do with him, it has to do with his choices. And you start to actually look at the facts of the situation. You start to realize this doesn't seem to validate my story. This doesn't seem to validate what I've been telling myself. 
It then produces this frustrating moment of like, I don't know what to believe. Because I see it now logically, but like emotionally, like it doesn't it doesn't connect to the logic. And this is the hard part is oftentimes we are run by our feelings. Our feelings dictate our logic instead of our logic dictating our feelings. Making you victim to your feelings. Victim to the lies, victim to the stories that you tell yourself and leaving you stuck. And so when you move into the camp of saying, okay, I'm going to make this decision logically and I'm going to train my feelings how to follow, it changes it up completely. Because then you're able to show up with a new focus and intention of, okay, this is what's actually true. He left me because he's an abusive asshole. He left me because he decided to cheat and he wasn't honest enough just to communicate that he didn't want this relationship anymore. There's so many different pieces that you have to actually work on breaking down. But if you don't change the story you're believing, you will stay stuck forever. So we're talking about healing narcissistic abuse. I want you to understand it's two things. It's going back and it's healing the initial image that has you continue to cycle through toxicity now. And it's going back and it's rewiring the story that you're believing in the moment, in the past, in, in the present to be able to say, okay, what is actually true? Because if you don't change what is fiction back to reality, you will continue to believe a lie, to believe a fantasy, and to stay stuck forever. If I can help you with any of this, please go to rawmotivations.com slash breakthrough. Click on the link down below. We'll love to talk to you and love to show you what you're doing wrong and how I can help you move forward in the healing process to become free from narcissistic abuse.